I thought we'd just show you what we do before we leave the yard. And what I've done now is just I've reached, undone them on the wall. If you look over there, you can see certain tie rings. They're all positioned in a certain way that suits. Also, we have long and short chains. When all the chains go back on, one will have, each, each ring will have a long and a short chain. So these horses are all standing here very happily. We talked in depth, I think, the other day about this horse in the middle. So now, um, was on the near side, and I was saying to you how it picked up information. Horses like that learn quickly. Um, if you've got the right, um, all I can say, rapport with them, if you've got that connection with them, you can get to them really quickly. It doesn't mean that they necessarily are here a short space of time, but you don't have to go back over so much because you've always got to consolidate whatever you teach. So all these three here now are standing very quiet together. You, I've heard it said, you know, oh, why do you drive? Well, the reason I drive three abreast, we've got a lot of horses to do. All, every single one of these horses is a green horse. This one on the offside, uh, he's just coming because he's been laid off a long time. This is a new horse to the job in the centre off-bred Welsh cob. Um, got with a coloured horse, obviously, and little fella on the inside who is a lovely little cob. I mean, he really is a nice little fella. So he was on the offside, so we've had a swap about, and this one's now in the middle. But if you look down there, you see these two horses, well, all three of them with their leg at rest. So they're standing there quiet and happy. And what I try and say to you all the time is safe, confident, and happy in any sphere of harness work. None of these horses are, at the moment, going pair with anything. But what are we teaching them just standing here? We're teaching them to tolerate one another. They can all bang heads, bite each other, kick if they wanted to, but they're all standing quiet together. If you, you know, saw the stables at eight o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at night, they're always quiet. You don't hear horses pouring. There's um, six or eight other horses in there. And you don't hear them pouring, banging about, calling because these horses have left. And this is what we're looking for. At this time of their training, I want them to stand quiet. They've all only got rubber bits in. When I pick these reins up now, and just say, boys, or girls are mainly on it, is it? No, right, come back. Come back, babies, come back, come back. Now I'm not pulling, if I show you like with two fingers, yeah? So it's thumb and forefinger. Three horses, all coming back. Come back, my babies. Come back, darlings, and still coming, yeah? Are they having their heads pulled off? Are we achieving that with a curb chain and a shank bit by a shank bit? I mean, a piece that comes down the side, like a Liverpool butterfly, military reversible, Buxted, all of them bits. No, it's a soft rubber snaffle and even the snaffle itself is loose ringed so the ring can roll around through the bit there is nothing on there there's no bits welded on so there's any cantilever whatsoever and them horses are standing there people say to me why ever do you turn them in to the yard like that well the reason i turn them into the yard is they're all going to get an education of turning to the left to come out of the yard and to help, they've all got to come round together. So, if I'm moving back up again, come up, walk on, come on, up, walk, 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 walk. They all come back, put their heads on there, they'll all stop. Now, what I'm going to do, obviously, when I turn to the left, oh, uh, sorry, turn to the right, as I turn to the right, these horses will be pushed by the pole. On their left hand side won't they? I mean this is going to come round now he's going to push this horse that pole's going to push this off, and he's going to come over because of his trace when I come back in the yard what I will do um, possibly all depends what sort of trip we've had and what else we've got to do maybe we've got to come back in the yard and get them to stand still or maybe we've got to do something else but I would then come back in and come right over to the right hand side of the yard as tight as I can yeah and then I would turn them onto this wall which, in point of fact, does exactly the same thing. Now, obviously, I can put them on this wall, and then all I've got to do is slightly to the left, and they'd be going out the yard. 
and a lot of people think he's for a, you know some sort of I don't know reasons people come up with um, but that's the reason I do that so as I turn now they've got quite a long big carriage a long carriage on and I last them come round babies come round my darlings come on baby boys come on round you come come on come on you see them all stepping sideways all coming round and they've all got to get round come round come on come on come on before that step there come on that's it good but steady now steady my babies now you heard all slipping then it's just been shod this horse and it was my mistake not the farriers in any way but I wanted him to move the road nails up one hole because what this horse does when he goes to work this one on the offside when you ask it to go on he tends to strike his toe first and try and pull off with his toe and if you say to me well what's wrong with him nothing's wrong with him it's like you look at anybody's shoes you know 20 people's shoes turn them all upside down and look how they're, they're worn they'll all be different you know they might be too similar or three similar even but they'll all be different so they're all standing there now just lovely yeah well stand my baby stand still so stand still now stand still so you, you can't be you see this horse here this little baby child on, on this side right he's just done that there I, it's hard to concentrate on what i'm doing and talk to you but see look put his legs back this horse put his legs back this horse got one leg back because he's got a tremendous amount of body weight so that laid on the collar will hold it you don't have to put both but this in the middle and especially this one on the near side put his weight back right just to lay on because he knows i want him to stand still and although the collar's up his chest he's there in that position ready that if the if the weight comes on his shoulder it's not going to unbalance him they're learning is what i'm trying to say it's very very um involved i suppose and because i've done this all my life it makes it hard sometimes to explain um because i think that perhaps you already understand um and it's not true for everybody to actually understand what we're trying to achieve so there they are now you can say to me no that's not true and i don't believe well don't believe it then i don't really care but that horse there has never been between the poles and I believe, is that right Ray? this horse never been on the inside has he? No. He's been on the outside, he's travelled the outside, now he travelled the outside because he was a bit unsure of traffic, yeah, so we put him on the outside, now this is nice, watch this and learn, right, she's just investigating him, yes, right, now what she's saying, I'm, uh, my position in this herd is more than yours, I won't tell her that, I won't accept that, right, I'll just let her get on and let the three of them decide what's what, but what I won't tolerate is her being spiteful to him, there, did you see what I just said spiteful, now he is back, so I'll say to oi, you do, that'll do, stand up, right, now are they terrified of me, are they all jumping forward because I've raised my voice, but she ain't doing it no more is she? So she knows I'm talking to her. She knows that was directed at her. Did the others react violently, jump forward? Now if I was someone that smacked horses or hit them with a whip and all that nonsense, they would all jump forward because they'd all think, oh God, he's gonna hit us. So she's got some flies on her, but that's all right. Just one or two got in her ear, but nothing real problem. The stuff we bathe them with every time they come back, their pressure wash has a fly repellent in it um, you know if we think it needs it we just add it to the mixture along with the antiseptic spray you know that we use that goes inside the container to come out at the same time as the warm water does you know under pressure so they're all standing there perfectly happy now if you either believe me or believe me not it's the first time that horse has been in the middle and it's the first time that horse has been there and I've just told her off for telling him off, you know, or getting a bit, what's it, because all she done first was, that was just a touch and just a warning. Then she come back with a little bit more aggression. Ears back to dominate. I don't want that. If she ever went in a pair, or even if she's standing by another horse, you know, out on a drive and she's, you know, 
next to another horse, you don't want all that nonsense. And they don't need it as long as you can talk to them and say, hey, that'll do. And they do as they're told or do that they're asked. Okay then. So the gate will now automatically open with the special automatic opener. Which is a piece of rope. <laughs> so there. Also the other thing is I want you to notice, these are all green horses. You know, they've been here a couple of weeks. But this one here has been here, um, just come back for a refresher because she's been off for so long. But them two there are green horses. Have they made any attempt with that gate open to move? Am I hanging on to them and I'm pulling their heads off? Have I got, you know, do, doing anything? Have I got, look, look down here. Have I got my foot on the brake? They're all standing here. And that's what you're looking for. And that's lots of things going on here that the average person perhaps wouldn't pick up on. But they're standing. They're working together already as a team. This is all part of being a team. When they say a pair of horses or a team of horses are well matched, and have nothing to do with their colour. Not to a coachman, you know, not to someone who, who drives horses. Or They're well matched in pace and everything. Well, there ain't no way these, these are going to be easily matched in pace. This is longer in the leg than that one. Look at the height of the ox. This one's lower, but wider, heavier. Different made. One have the stride that the centre horse will have. You know, so to get them to go together at all, and all share the weight is, well, perhaps, you know, takes a little bit of skill to do that, see? So now I'm going to ask them to walk. All right, boys, walk, walk. And all co-weight together, can you see? All eight. Now that'll do you, young lady. And we'll come out there. That'll do, that'll do. So I've just talked to her. Can you see her ears back? I'm not having this. You behave yourself, you two boys. I'm in the middle here. We don't need it, right? And we'll just try and get that so it's just sweet. But they're all walking up the road together. And that's lovely. Pack up now, baby. No, no, no. You do. So I've just told her you do. Alright, truck boys, come on in. Hey, 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 hey. Pack up. Pack up. So obviously there's a great deal of judgment in it. Is she going to buck? Is she going to kick? Yeah, sure she will. Um, but she won't when I tell her not to. Yeah. So when she hears my voice, I tell her not to. If you look at the poles, we've got one up, one down. The poles are not restrained. I don't want them restrained. I know how to restrain a pole. Um, but I don't want them like that. I want this horse to be able to move over. Um, this little fella on the inside because I know it's the first time on his inside here and he won't like it he'll feel them twigs up the side of him they feel there'll be a maybe if it's been raining there'll be a puddle or two in the gutter you know um, it'll be soft to walk on he don't know whether he should walk on it or not so if you put a fixed pole down the side all he will do is lay on the pole if you allow the pole to rise yeah when he lays on so the pole comes up the beauty of that is it gives him a few more inches and as he accepts it the pole drops down back down again. All that's a bit high tech, but well, not high tech, but it's it's um, a bit of understanding the job. But understanding your vehicles, we have plenty of vehicles. Um, but this vehicle here has come as a standard vehicle and it's been quite um, I suppose you could say refined, you know, to come up my baby. And see this pole on the outside is just coming up now a little bit but this horse has got his belly over the top so I don't mind that also they get to touch one another their bodies get to touch and they can tell the difference they know whether a fly is landing on their side you know you see them shake their skin when there's a fly so these are just going absolutely lovely and sweet first time in his first time in the middle his first time on side yeah and he's just accepting it he just watches and when I'm trying to talk to you people like me to talk and explain what I'm doing but what you have to understand I do go off um, well two things I'll get excited about what I do even though I'm 300 years old now um, 
but I'm watching all the time and learning and seeing what my horses are doing and how they're reacting and everything. Now, see there, he's come over and bumped her, he's bumped her, but she's not reacted. When we go up to a trot, there'll be a little bit of reaction at that speed. When we go to a canter, there'll be a reaction at that speed, but it will fade as we go. Oh, what, mate? As we go, it will fade down. There he baby. And it was quite funny, like, she'll... It's nothing to do with size, that's nonsense. But she's aggressive. I'm in charge, telling the little fella on the inside. Well, this, <laughs> this one, this side, don't really care. <laughs> they just don't care. They don't care who's in charge. You know, but push him too far, I'll come into his space too much, and he will definitely answer. Stand up for himself. I've got to stand up for that little fella at the minute. We don't want him being... Oh, I don't want to be here, do we? Because that's no good. Back up. You do. That's it. People say, I'm always saying that, you do. In fact, someone made a comment and said, why do you keep saying to them horses, voodoo? <laughs> so there you go. That's a tandem now. Just going along. The position of the centre horse and the near side horse is for their first time. And we're 100 yards, 200 yards from home. And now I'm going to wave these motor cars on. Get them out of the way. Um, just one more thing. And now we're going to go right. Trot! Trot, boys! All trot! Steady! And they've all got the old rubber bit. You do! So you see when I talk to her, she went to, you know, throw her bum up in the air then and have a little buck. But I talk to her and she respects me and she does it. But she don't do it out of bloody fear. With a big lump of iron in its mouth and a curb chain on pulling its head off. Don't do that, does she? She just goes, old oh, dad said I mustn't do it, so I mustn't do it. All right, babies, come on. Canter! Head! Head! Come on! Hup. Steady. The other thing we're doing here, I should have mentioned to you, and people don't understand, um, but this horse here, the centre horse, will lift its head eye. It'll have eye head carriage. Just a natural thing of it, the way it's constructed. It'll have a decent, you know, height for its head carriage. So what we've done, and we'll do with the others, well, this one's already been done, but the near side horse we've done, we'll open the blinkers out. So when she puts her head up, the centre horse, you see that blinker there, she can see me. At the top of her blinker, sat up here way above her. You know, I think when I'm on here, roughly, roughly speaking, my head will be, you know, my line of sight will be eight foot high. So they're going along well. Now, come, some people are saying to me, Ken, can't you straighten that horse up on the inside? I don't want to. But, you know, that inside horse, he wants to run with his head out like that, it's fine for a minute. Sure, I can pull him round straight, and then a problem. But I'm allowing him to do that because he's got to have a look at all this stuff. He's never been out there. The first time we put him in, he was on the outside. People say, "Well, surely you put him on the inside when you train them." No. With some you might, but but quite a few will go straight on the outside. I would say I would even say majority do for us. And the reason being is if you put them over there, they hide behind. The, uh, the, you know, the offside horse, they lied behind it. So that when you eventually put them out there, they find it very difficult. If you put them out there to start with, and you know what you're doing, and I don't mean that saying that other people don't know, or there's plenty of horses out there, I never broke them, they're going perfectly well without my help. But the way I do it is to let them have the confidence. Yeah, they've got to have confidence. Now, see, you just looked at him then, didn't she? Like that again, you do. And all I've got to say to her is you do. And that's enough just to make her behave herself, yeah? If I didn't do that, I certainly wouldn't want to smack her with a stick and all that bloody nonsense. You know, it's, there's nothing wrong with a whip being used in the right fashion. But whip only wants to do is an indication of what you're asking it to do, you know? Um, they haven't listened to you, you've asked them to trot, they haven't listened, a little touch on them, you know, and people say you must never touch them on the bum or anywhere else other than between the 
collar and the pad, that's a load of nonsense. If ever I've heard it. And I'll tell you for why. You'll be travelling along here with the whip in the right position as I tell you to hold the whip. Yeah. It will catch in the hedge. Your first reaction is to pull it free. And that lash can land anywhere on the horse. So you've got to prepare the horse to have it anywhere. Yeah. And I do that, you know, I mean we do that. We have a whip and you know we'll touch them all round the bum, round the back legs, right up round the neck, round the ears, round everywhere. So that they're not frightened by it. Um, and the other thing is, please don't think I'm being big headed or anything like that. I just find it so frustrating that I'll get criticised for driving in a rubber bit and it's not safe. But I'm at this time of year, you know, with the sun, I average 300 mile a week driving. Well, it's a bit over that actually, but it's definitely 300, about 320 a week. Yeah? That's in a seven day week, but I'll do 300 mile behind horses. There's a thousand or two films on uh, YouTube, and there's an archive full of them, you know, like I mean, seriously full. Now, how can I possibly drive all them horses, stallions, horses that have run away, horses been involved in accidents, all sorts of horses, how can I possibly drive them? And they all go, every last one of them goes in a soft rubber bit. So how can I do that? What am I, some sort of genius? No, not at all. I'm an ordinary fella that trains horses. Done it all my life and I've learnt one thing. And it's very hard to get over to people because they get strummed into them. This is a driving bit. That's not a driving bit. Well, who are the hell are these people that are telling you this? There's one little girl got sent out the ring after having horse trained here and broke in. She could drive the little girl really nice. And it was in a soft rubber bit. And um, I was told to go out and put a driving bit in it. And this is a so-called someone running a show or a judge looking at all she's going round yeah well I've got an old book I know I've said this a few times now a real old book a catalogue book a man would take around it's not a very big thing it's about nine inches by a foot and in there there's pictures of everything that his company made and supplied to um, shops etc so it was a wholesaler's catalogue yeah and um in there there's a whole page people don't want to listen to it sure they don't want to listen to it but they're rubber driving bits a whole page and maybe 20 on there i suppose something like that next to that if you don't mind there's a whole page of leather driving bits just pure leather the only metal on them is the rings you attach the reins to so how can i drive all the different horses I drive and bear in mind all these horses are babies that come in not all of them I suppose 85% of them are, are babies you know young horses three year old we don't take them until they've had their third birthday I wouldn't break also 18 months two year old that's ridiculous in my opinion who am I it's only my opinion everyone's got different opinions but why would you do that when something's growing you wouldn't get a thank you you wouldn't get um, a kitty nine years old pushing a barrel load of concrete would you on a building site no so why would you do it with horse the joints have got to settle a bit and they don't the joints don't settle up and done till they're about well, a six year old maybe but the point is that you wouldn't you know you you don't before three i'm not i'm not talking about january the first i'm talking about three year old their actual birthday well there's lots of horses that are in racing for instance i don't want to get into a row or an argument with anybody just my opinion but they say it's a right uh, horses racing at two year old well they all have january the first so if you had all born in september which is you know why not they born in september how old's that before it's a yearling in january September, October, November, December. So that'd be like, and then you, then you, a two year old, the next January, it could be on the racetrack. 
so that's why I just don't believe in it. I just believe they want to get them joints in their legs settled a bit. And come over, baby. Here's your baby. Oh, this little fella here now, he wants his head over there. Nothing wrong. There's people fishing in the river. You can hear people talking over there. Um, like that. Let him have a look. And he won't mind. And then when he's ready, he'll start putting his head back and looking the other way. Once he's done a bit. <laughs> 